Hello what's up peeps, this is the Geek God is back again with another video and this time we're gonna paint a stylized fan art of a really famous TV series on Netflix. We're gonna draw Eddie Munson from Stranger Things Season 4. This is gonna be a bit new for you guys who have been following this channel for the last couple of years as I've never made anything on characters and this will be a character centric video. So it's something new and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll go step by step, starting from the rough concept sketch to the clean line art and then the color flats and finally rendering it in the cool upside down color palette and style. It'll mostly be a time lapse video as it took me exactly 2 hours to make the illustration. But I'll also make sure to explain some of the key steps and methods and details. So make sure to watch the video till the end and if you're a Stranger Things fan, do like this video, share, comment and help the YouTube algorithm to let the video reach new audience and more Stranger Things fans through your engagement. And subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications about my future uploads. So we start off with the first step which is the concept sketch. It's pretty straightforward. You have to have an inspiration, an idea, a concept, a reference. I have a reference as this scene from Stranger Things, so I know I have seen the scene and I really picked that part where Eddie just goes all out blasting natural puppets and I really loved it and I wanted to capture that as best as I could. So it's pretty straightforward, you just start with like a very rough stick figure kind of thing with the basic shapes to get the pose and the line of action right. Once you have the pose roughly ready, just keep adding layers. Okay? Lower the opacity of the layer that you just sketched in, take a new layer and start doing a bit more refined sketch and do this three or four times until you have a roughly cleaner, clear and refined line art or sketch. You can easily trace on top of when doing the clean line art. So who is Eddie and why Eddie? Well, let me answer that question by saying that Eddie is an absolute legend and this scene literally made me jump up and stand there watching in amazement. I mean, how awesome and epic was this scene. I replayed the scene over and over because I couldn't believe how cool it was. The most metal performance ever, right? I don't want to spoil anything for y'all just in case you haven't finished watching the finale yet. But if you're watching this video and you've read the title, then you've most probably seen it, which is why you're watching this video in the first place. So this scene and this show struck all the right chords for me. The way it captures the 80s nostalgia with gorgeous production design, the beautiful selection of music and all the easter eggs. If you're an 80s kid, you just can't hate it. I mean, yes, there have been love-hate moments with this show for most low points and high points. Even I have had my love-hate moments with this show. But it's mostly been love. I can tell you that. For Eddie's guitar, which is a lovely looking little beast, I wanted to get it right. So I downloaded uh, an image of Eddie's guitar. I just looked it up. I googled it, downloaded it, put it into Photoshop and just I traced on top of the guitar to get it right and then I just uh, scaled it and transformed it to fit into his hands. I am a 90s kid, I was born in the early 90s, growing up with retro pop culture and good music and this show just brings it all back and hits you like a train. Halloween's Michael Mayer's mask, John Carpenter inspired music, 80s body horror, aliens, classic sci-fi tropes, 80s pop music, hard rock and metal. But for me, it all peaks right here at this very scene. Eddie Munson starts playing freaking Master of Puppets by Metallica in the Upside Down. And he does not forget to shred out that epic soul in the end by Kirk Hammett. And he nails it. What a killer scene. And Metallica, well, I go crazy when it comes to Metallica. I am a Metallica super fan. So the Hellfire Club, right? I mean Hellfire Club forever. It just captures everything 80s. I love playing board games and the Hellfire Club is like a little cult kind of a... Well, people call it a cult. It's not a cult. It's just a group of school kids who want to play. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a board game club. It's a Dungeons and Dragons club. It's a very close group of very selective nerds who are crazy about the game very passionate about the game and they're essentially misfits in the society. They are stuck in their world and people just call them weird and nerds. So there's a Hellfire Club, it's very uh, symbolic of the, the satanic villain present in the 
in the game and it's symbolic of the main villain Vecna in the series. I just sketched it separately and then I'm gonna transform it down to fit into Eddie's t-shirt and then just erase the rest of it that's been covered by his jacket. Now it's time for the line art and the line art process is again pretty much straightforward once you have a roughly clear line uh, sketch you just trace on top of it make sure to keep the opacity of your brush 100 percent and uh, opacity pressure control off only the thickness pressure control will be on to get a nice variation of uh, line thickness if you want to go more in detail about how to draw clean line art then i've made a separate video on it you can check it out it's called how to draw clean line art i mentioned a bunch of steps that you can follow if you want to draw really clean and professional line art some some of the points i illustrate in the video are uh, drawing fast strokes confident lines just do not go slow or just go for uh, multiple strokes on top of each other like hairy strokes try to avoid that try to go for fast and confident strokes and don't worry about mistakes they happen all the time you just have to control z undo pain undo pain undo pain just keep doing that until you get the right stroke you'll see me doing that a lot in this video i'll do a lot of undos until i get that stroke right but most importantly it has to be fast and it has to be confident that way it looks clean and spontaneous other things are if you're finding it difficult to get a certain stroke out then you might want to rotate the canvas by pressing r on your keyboard you can rotate it to align it with your natural stroke flow that way you can easily go for that fast stroke and get it right line thickness is again a very important thing you don't want to make the whole thing monotonous in terms of line thickness you should have a good variation of thick and thin lines that way it gives a sense of weightage places that are more towards shadow can have thicker lines and uh, lines that are more towards light can have thinner lines like that you can also use it to indicate uh, perspective things closer to you can have thicker lines and things far away can have thinner lines and also you can use it for compositional reasons things that you want to draw attention towards can have thicker lines while uh, unimportant background elements can have thinner lines so i talk more in details about these things in my video on uh, how to draw clean liner go check it out i am a metallica super fan and i even have the band's name tattooed on my arm and that's the only tattoo i have their music has really inspired me over the decades i don't even know where to start if i had to appreciate the early music from the 80s the first five albums brilliant and it's so evident how influential they've been in the heavy metal and thrash metal scene they are undoubtedly the largest and the most popular metal band in the world if you consider all countries with no other metal bands coming close to their global success i mean just look at master of puppets it's been 36 years since the song release and it's still in the top 100 most streamed metal songs even today and so is the album one of the most sold metal albums even today metallica have been around for over 40 years now as four decades and during that time they still rule as the kings in the genre if you look at the top four metal albums sold ever search it anywhere it's all their albums their fifth album the black album is the most highly sold metal album ever even today master of puppets takes the second position and culturally it's the most influential and revolutionary metal album till date in my opinion why the Lightning takes the third place and, and Justice for All takes the fourth place. And even in the hard rock and metal category, the Black Album is still the most sold album till date. Now that's some hell of a success and it hasn't been topped in 40 years. Now that deserves huge respect. So once I'm done with my line art, I'll proceed to the coloring. And it starts with the color flats, which is nothing but blocking out all the separate segments of the art with a specific color, a base color that you think might uh, that's best fit for the production design of the scene. So I'll go with the generic colors that I see in the scene. Eddie is a ginger. He has uh, orange hair, so and a greenish jacket and black full sleeve T-shirt with a white torso area that has the Hellfire Club logo on it blue denim jeans and a beautiful red electric guitar and a bandana on his head so i'll just use very mid-tone colors nothing too strong or too saturated 
for these things because I'll ultimately be rendering it. I'll be adding light and shadow and it'll help if the tones are neutral at this stage. So the method I use for easily coloring everything is through actions. I have very simple and handy action that I've prepared as for selecting areas. So one thing that's very important is that all the shapes in your liner should be completely closed. There shouldn't be any gaps or leakage because you don't want your selection or color to leak out of that particular gap. So you should have your line art complete and whole, right? And then you can use the magic wand tool to select a certain area and you want to expand the selection by at least one or two pixels to avoid any kind of blank pixel areas around your uh, selection while coloring it. So I have prepared this action already for selection. You can do the same. You can uh, go to select, then modify, then expand and make it one pixel. And you don't have to do it every single time because prepare the action and just click on the play button every time you want to execute that action. And that way you can easily flat out the entire artwork with some base colors. Now speaking about the selection of the song, it's just so perfect. At times I wonder what if they use Call of Cthulhu from Ride the Lightning. That would be epic too, but it's an instrumental, no lyrics but it will work really well as background music in some other scenes maybe, especially the ominous intro riff. But Master of Puppets is undoubtedly the best and most perfect song for this scene. It came out in 1986 and the season takes place in 1986. On top of that, spoiler alert, Vecna has been the Master of Puppets all along. He's been the main villain of the entire series, not just this season. The guy behind all the events till now, the master of puppets. And this song really nails it. And Eddie nails the song. What a legend. What a badass metal performance. It makes me so happy to see kids of this generation appreciating the song and discovering this band because of this scene, because of this beautiful show. So now that I have the color flats ready, I will start rendering it. So to begin with, I'm gonna add some reddish gradient to the sky behind, just to set the overall base and color tone of the scene. And as you can see, I've put all of Eddie in one group, the line art and the color flats inside one group. And I've taken some new layer on top of it in clipping mask, and I'll just paint some dark tones in multiply mode to darken the scene overall because there's a lot of bright lightning going on behind him so Eddie will mostly be in silhouette and some rim light will be there on the left side. Not a whole lot of detail is going to be visible on Eddie, not a whole lot of highlight is going to fall on Eddie. As you can see, I'm using a lot of hard light blending mode for these scenes so that you know it, it washes out the scene with the bright red, but at the same time, it, it also retains properties of underlying colors. It's better than overlay and it's better than normal. It's like a perfect fit that comes right in between the two. For the rim light, it's very important to have it on the edges that are facing the lightning. And also you can put some bright pure white highlight on some of the areas that are right next to the lightning. And the white mostly acts as a reflection, not highlight, but the red acts as highlight.
So once that's done, I'll do some final color correction. I'll use some color lookups to see if I can make the colors pop a bit more. And finally, I can use some particle effects like some sort of lens distortions or particles that are next to the frame getting blurred out. So I can do that. I'll just uh, add some Gaussian blur to those circles and decrease the opacity. Add a bit of gradient, dark gradient multiplier from below to direct attention towards Eddie. And finally, I can draw some bats. I don't know what they call them, demo bats. You get to see a lot of them uh, on the show, like, you know, <laughs> demo gorgon bats, or demo dogs, demo bats, I guess. Paint a whole hive of them. And then I'll just uh, reposition them and duplicate them a few times. And there we have it. Eddie rocking it out to Metallica. So there we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the bell icon. So that's all for now. See you on the next one. Peace.